Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we will be tinkering with Gladopto Zigbee Switch module. And this one doesn't need neutral wire. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let me start by thanking all those wonderful people who are supporting me by becoming YouTube channel members. Thank you very much for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And now let's get started with today's video. Banggood has sent me this Glad Opto Zigbee Switch module for testing and recording purposes. And I have to say that I was expecting it to be much smoother than it actually was. But it's just because that module is a new module and there was no out-of-box Zigbee to MQTT support for this specific model. And the model is GLSD002. If you look at the Zigbee to MQTT list of supported devices, you will find a similar device which ends with 001. But that one is a bit different. This one is real switch module, meaning it is used to turn devices or power off and on, while the other one is also able to control the brightness of the LEDs or the lamps. Let's talk about the device. The device is Zigbee 3.0, at least it says that it is a Zigbee 3.0 compliant device. It can work without neutral wire, and as a matter of fact, it doesn't even have a place to hook up neutral wire. You have option to connect three live wires, incoming live wires, and two outgoing live wires that are switched. Yes, there is also option to hook up switch. And that is great because, as I said, you can use it to retrofit your existing infrastructure or existing wall switch. Connecting the device is very easy. All you have to do is disconnect your current switch in wall switch and hook up those two wires in the wall to line live wire and line out or live wire out going to your device. Please bear in mind that you have to provide minimum of 3 watt load. So if you have one LED bulb that is 2 watts it will not be enough to stably power the device. It has to have minimum of 3 watts of load and also maximum is 1000 watts. So be careful what you hook on it. I was using it to retrofit my current switch, as you can see here, and it was really easy. I had it done in a couple of minutes. Yes, unfortunately, my switch is a Vimar switch and I do have some bypasses there, but it was easy to even in this situation retrofit it and reuse the switch so my family can still use the switch and I can control it via the Zigbee network. So let's talk about pairing of the device. The easiest way to pair the device is to press on this reset button and hold it pressed for 5 seconds. The device will reset and it would start blinking or switching the relay inside the box off and on for 4 times and on 5th time the light will stay on or the load. And yes, I always stay the load because you do not have to put this in a switch box. You can for example put it under the socket for the TV and this can be used also to control the power to that socket. So yes, you can use it as a switch, but also you can use it behind the socket to control the power to that socket. And after you've set your device in a pairing mode, just click Permit Join inside Zigbee to MQTT. And the device is here. But as you can see, it says that the device itself is unsupported. So this is a great time to see how we can create custom converter inside Zigbee to MQTT. Before we continue, let's copy this here, because we will need a Zigbee model later on. And let's open a documentation, because we will be using parts of the documentation here. How do you add device that is officially not supported? And by the way, I did already make an issue or open an issue, created the custom converter for this, it works, so maybe by the time you are watching this video, this device itself will be fully officially supported. But in a case that you run into similar device, let's see what you have to do to create custom converter. It says that we have to do first pairing. And when you successfully pair the device, you may see information like this. 
successfully interviewed device name, but it says that Zigbee module LumiSense manufacturer some name is not supported and that we should go to this page to add support. So how do you do it? First, let's copy this text here. And if you're using Zigbee to MQTT add-on, it's very easy to do everything from inside VS Code add-on in Home Assistant. In Visual Studio Code Server, Zigbee to MQTT folder, where the configuration YAML file is, database is located, devices, etc. Create new file. We will call it gl sd 002.js. The extension needs to be JavaScript. And let's press enter. Paste here the information we copied from the Zigbee to MQTT documentation page, and now we have to change a couple of things. First thing is replace the Zigbee module with the Zigbee module that you got here. So I will once again copy this, go back to Visual Studio Code, and replace it here and here. When you're already doing this, let's clean up everything else and let's copy also the vendor and the description. And let's press save. Remember this file name, it's gl-sd-002.js. For the next step, there are two options, but I find that first option that I will show you works better for me. First option is to go to supervisor, Zigbee to MQTT, configuration, and here under external converters, just add new line, type or paste the name of the file, and press save, which is something that I will be doing a little bit later. I just want to show you the other option. Inside Zigbee to MQTT, go to settings, external converters, press on plus sign and type here the name of external converter, gl-sd-002.js and click submit. It now shows you option to restart, but unfortunately out of two or three tests I did, most of the times it didn't save this file name, so I'll go back and do it in the supervisor. And we have to restart add-on. Zigbee to MQTT is back. Let's check the device and as you can see, it now says that it is supported. For the next step, according to documentation, we have to go to logs, select debug level, and in order to filter everything out, I will copy the friendly name, Go once again in a logs and paste it here. Every information that this device sends will be visible here in the log file. But to cut the long story short, no, for this device, for this specific device, this will not work. As you see, it tells you to set the log level to debug, restart Zigbee to MQTT, which we did, and we should see something like this. But since this device is not a sensor, it's a switch, and switch itself doesn't need to send updates, uh, something that, for example, temperature humidity th sensors should do because they are sending temperature and humidity information plus battery level plus some other things. Or, for example, door and window sensor that should also update not just the battery level, but if the door opens or closes, this one doesn't have anything to do. So to cut the long story short, for this device, we have different approach. And there are three examples. We will be using later on the second one, but let's look first at the first one. Bulb. This is what you can use and test your unsupported device with. For example, start with this configuration. Of course, adapt Zigbee module, model here, vendor and description, according to your device information, and then change this extend light command with one of the options here. And that way you can test if, for example, your lamp or your bulb supports brightness, color temperature, color temperature and brightness, etc. Advanced example is a DIY RAS project or DIY RUS free pad, which I showcased in my DIY remote video. And here you can find the link to that video. This example shows you how to use whole, single, double, triple, quadruple, release, 
information or get that information or state from the remote that has up to 20 buttons. But we also do not need this, we just need simple switch. For that, let's look at plug or switch. And yes, this is the information we need. Everything here we can leave as is. So what I'll do, I'll copy everything from here and paste it here. But I also have to change a couple of things here to match my configuration. And here it is. I've added the Zigbee model, model, vendor, description, and everything else is from the example of the plug or switch. If we now restart Zigbee to MQTT, let's go Zigbee to MQTT, restart. And this is now the information inside Zigbee to MQTT after we have customized the custom converter for this device. And it now correctly exposes switch and we can use it to turn device on and off. So let's simulate what will happen if you first install this custom converter and then pair the device. Or what would happen if your device is already set up. Let's go to about, delete this, force remove, delete, device is now removed, let's press permit join, and device is automatically added to Zigbee to MQTT. It exposes the switch, we can use the switch to turn it off or on, we can rename the device, let's call it corridor, save, Let's go to Configuration, Integrations, MQTT, Corridor. We have Gladopto, Zigbee 3.0, Smart, Home Switch. Everything is working here, including the control of the device. Since the version 2021.11, we have separated controls and sensors. Two sensors are last seen and link quality, so if you want, you can enable those two additional sensors. But for this device, we do not need it. Add it to Lovelace, Lights, Next, Yes, and that's it. Now, from within Home Assistant, we can toggle the switch and play with lights, and of course, add it to any automation inside Home Assistant. For final thoughts, let me just tell you a couple of things. At this point, I still have one issue, and that issue is something that I know how it can be resolved, but unfortunately, since I am no programmer, I don't have an idea on how to implement it. That's why I opened issue with Zigbee to MQTT, and I hope that somebody will help me, and I definitely know that someone will, to fix this issue and to have also automatic state updates. At this point, everything works, but if you would toggle the switch on the device itself, it wouldn't update the state here. So this is something that can be resolved by pulling the information or pulling the state from the device. But unfortunately, as I said, I don't know how to implement it and I did find example on what should be added. Am I happy with the device? I am, especially since I was really disappointed to see the device itself wasn't supporting inside a Zigbee to MQTT. But on the other hand, with a little bit of tinkering and help from both Deadly and Pedro on the Discord server, I did manage to get it working. And I'm really happy because this was my second device for which I created a custom converter and it works. In terms of the usability device, I also like it. I really would wish that devices such as this one would have option for two switches. Most of my wall switches have not one, but two switches in itself. It would be better for me to be able to control two separate devices with two physical switches. But yeah, I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you did find this video useful. If you do need help with custom converters, you can always try and join the Discord server and ask questions there or also go to the Discord server from the Zigbee to MQTT community. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and streams. Yes, YouTube still hasn't fixed the problem with disappearing comments, so if I don't respond to you, 
unfortunately, your message was probably removed by YouTube. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.